Good day, viewers, and welcome to your best hub for learning sciences, Jalo Science Academy. I am Mohamed Yero Jalo. Of course, this is your midweek edition of your tutorials that will be coming to you during the midweek. And these editions are dedicated purely to answering questions that are posed by viewers in my respective social media handles. That is via Facebook, via Telegram, and also in the comment section will be dealt with in the midweek edition. So we are going to look at a question posed by one of our viewers about the bleaching action of sulfur, oxide, and chlorine. And to illustrate those actions, using chemical equations so that is what i'll be taking you through during this tutorial Okay, this is the question. It says, differentiate between the bleaching action of sulfur, four oxide, and chlorine using chemical equations in your answer. Now, how do we tackle this? Let's just look at this. So here, we write chlorine. And here we write sulfur for oxide. Now, between chlorine and sulfur for oxide, this is Cl2, and this is SO2. Between chlorine and sulfur for oxide, chlorine bleaches in the presence of water. And chlorine is a gas which bleaches meaning it decolorizes substances, but it only do so in the presence of water. So if chlorine reacts with water, chlorine gaseous, water liquid, here, what products are formed? You get hydrogen chloride acid, which is hydrochloric acid, and you get H-O-C-L, an acid which is a weak acid. We call it the hypochlorous acid, or we refer to it as chlorine water. We can refer to this as chlorine water. These two products that are produced, this guy is a strong acid and this is a weak acid. This is an unstable compound because of the presence of this nascent oxygen okay nascent oxygen means it's an oxygen atom so that tells us it is nascent it's highly reactive it makes the compound unstable so this substance hocl here will then react with a dye a dye is a colored material okay any material that is colored can be referred to as a dye so if it reacts with a dye what happens this will break this one here will break into hcl gas and then you have oxygen here this oxygen is nascent is a nascent oxygen so if we say it is nascent oxygen that tells you it is highly reactive okay so when these two react what happened this guy is going to donate this oxygen to the dye and when it donates the oxygen it becomes hcl gas and then you have the dye here that will accept the oxygen 
So the dye have accepted the oxygen that has been donated by this hypochlorous acid. Okay. So this one that was colored, this dye plus this oxygen now is going to be colorless. So it becomes colorless because oxygen has been added to it. So because of the addition of oxygen to it, that has made it to become a colorless material. So in this case, we said what? These chlorine have bleached this material. But by what method has it bleached the material? The bleaching method here is by means of oxidation because this dye is accepting the oxygen. Okay, you see here it is colored on the product side. It has accepted the oxygen, which has made it to become a colorless substance, meaning it has been oxidized. And if it has been oxidized, what is causing it to oxidize? It is the chlorine. So we therefore say chlorine bleaches by means of oxidation. So the bleaching of chlorine is by a means of oxidation. And in this process, wherein the oxygen has been chemically added to the dye, it's a permanent process. It's going to be permanent. So we refer to it as a permanent bleaching. So chlorine bleaches permanently. It bleaches the substance permanently. Even if this dye, which was colored, is exposed to the environment, what happens? It is not going to regain its color again. So that is a permanent bleach that has taken place. On the other hand, for sulfur oxide, sulfur oxide also bleaches in the presence of water. Now, when sulfur oxide here, SO2, a gas, reacts with water, it is going to produce a weak acid. acid. And that weak acid that is produced is H2SO3, aqueous. So this H2SO3 that is formed, which is an aqueous substance here, which being a weak acid, we call it sulfurous acid, or we say it is trioxosulfate 4 acid, okay? So this H2SO4, this H2SO3, rather, this substance has the ability of breaking it breaks into two hydrogen ions and then the sulfite ion. So this sulfite ion here, this SO3, 2 minus, can then react with a dye. If it reacts with a dye, this dye is colored. It's a colored material. So when it reacts with the dye, what happens? This dye here is going to be reduced by this sulfur. So this now becomes a sulfate ion and then the dye is going to lose an oxygen. So from this colored substance, it now becomes colorless. So the colored material has been turned into a colorless material. So from the colored substance, it now becomes a colorless substance. So what happens? We say here, this one has been reduced because oxidation and reduction in terms of oxygen and hydrogen transfer is the addition of hydrogen and the removal of oxygen. And oxygen have been removed from this dye by the sulfite ion, which is the trioxosulfate 4. So this trioxosulfate 4 have reduced the dye into a colorless material. So this means of bleaching is a reduction. That's a reduction method of bleaching. So being that this method of bleaching is a reduction method of bleaching, and if this colorless material is brought into the atmosphere and it reacts with atmospheric oxygen, it is going to regain its color again. It regains its color because it loses oxygen and if it is brought to the atmosphere to react with atmospheric oxygen and regain its color so that makes the bleaching action of sulfur oxide to be temporal 
So we refer to this as a temporary bleaching method. So these are the differences between the bleaching action of chlorine and the bleaching action of sulfur for oxide. So these are the equations illustrating how this bleach takes place. Thanks for watching. You can like our video, subscribe to this channel if you are new, hit the notification bell to be notified each time we release a new video. And there is also a study group on Telegram, Jalo Science Academy. You can see it on the screen below, or you can join that channel on Telegram. And also there is a Facebook page, Jalo Science Academy. You can also like that page to be receiving our videos. Once more, thank you. Continue sending in your questions as I'll always be available to answer them for you.